Hi, this is Miss Wiles, and in this video, I'll be talking about absolute value. Now, absolute value is defined as a distance. It's the distance that a particular value is from the zero on the number line. So, for example, if you had a number line, and here's zero on the number line, and you have a number out here like seven, the distance from zero to seven is seven. So the absolute value of seven equals seven. Now that doesn't seem too uh, difficult to remember, but if we have the same number, let's extend this a little bit so it makes more sense with the distance because I want it to look about equal. If we have a number out here that's negative seven, the distance from zero to the negative seven is still seven. So the absolute value of negative seven is also equal to seven. So what you can tell from this, since absolute value is about distance, whatever expression or number or whatever you have inside the absolute value signs, it will always equal a positive number. It can never equal a negative number. So let's do a few examples. So for example, the absolute value of three is just three. The absolute value of one half is just one half. The absolute value of negative 17 is just 17. So those are just a few examples to show you that the absolute value when you solve it will never ever be negative. If I were to say, what's the um, absolute value? If I were to say like the uh, um, absolute value of negative 11 equals negative 11, that would be false because absolute value of something can never equal a negative number. Or if I were to say like the absolute value of x equals negative 7, then the solution of that equation is the empty set because it can never ever happen. The absolute value of some number will never be negative 7. Or I could have some very complicated looking expression like 3x minus 9 is equal to negative 1. Nope. And as soon as you see that, you say, nope, I don't even have to do any work because I see the absolute value all by itself and it can never equal negative 1. However, if I had something else outside of the absolute value in this same equation, if I had like plus 8 out here, then I can solve this. I can solve this kind of equation. Maybe I want to do, if I did 8 plus, it would still equal, well, let me show you that. If we did 8 plus, I would try to subtract 9 from each side of the equation because these absolute value signs work like parentheses. You have to do what's outside of it first and then work your way inside. So if I were to subtract 9, that would be a bad thing to do, subtract 8 from both sides of the equation, then these two will cancel out and I'll have 3x minus 9, the absolute value of that equals negative 9. And at that point, I can stop and say I'm not going to work anymore because the absolute value of something can never equal a negative number. But if this equation looked like negative 7, plus the absolute value of 3x minus 9 equals negative 1, then I would need to solve it to a point where I can tell what's going on. So I would add 7 to both sides of the equation, just like I would if that 3x minus 9 was inside parentheses, because I want to take care of what's outside of that first. These two values cancel out. I'm left with the absolute value of 3x minus 9, and that has to equal negative 1 plus 7, which is 6. Well, now this value... That's a positive number. So since it's a positive number, there are going to be solutions. And there's not just going to be one solution. There are going to be two solutions. And let me show you how that works. Well, first, let me move this down. <clears throat> if we get to the point in an equation where we have an absolute value expression, whatever it is inside the absolute value equals a positive number, then we can keep on going and make it, we can find our solutions. Now, since you have to go back to this 6, the absolute value of 6 is 6, and the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. 
Now that concept is why we do the next step. On the next step, we say that either 3x minus 9 equals 6, like the first one here. So we're saying 3x minus 9 could equal 6. And if it equals 6, then I have a solution. Or, let me move this over. Or 3x minus 9 equals negative 6. Because the value Not that is you. inside the absolute value signs, it could Not equal 6 and it could equal negative 6. So I have two equations that I need to solve because only any the two answers that I'll find would work for this equation. So at that point, I've got two equations that I need to solve, and I solve them using the methods that I know. So on this left-hand side equation, I would add 9 to both sides of this equation, and at 3x equals 15, I would divide by 3, and x could equal 5. The other equation could still work, so I would add 9 to both sides of the equation here, and I get 3x equals 3, because negative 6 plus 9 is 3. I divide by 3, and x could equal 1. So for this particular problem, if I were solving this problem, I have two solutions, x equals 5, or x equals 1. <coughs> So let's go on to a couple of examples. Before we get into these examples, let me say something here. If you have an absolute value of anything, whatever it is, there can't be anything outside of the absolute value on that side of the equation. If that were to equal a negative number, any negative number, then you would stop and say no solution. If you have anything on the inside of the absolute value sign that equals a positive number, then either whatever is inside the absolute value sign, it will equal that number, or whatever that is will equal the opposite of that number. Because we're dropping the absolute value signs and we're working with what's inside. If you have an absolute value sign equals zero, this means you'll only have one solution, and that's the only time that you will only have one solution. So those are the things that can happen whenever you're solving these kinds of equations. Let's do a few. Okay, this first one here, we have solve for s. And if you look at the equation, this absolute value of s, is not by itself on one side of the equation. So similar to what you do if that, was, if that was a quantity that was in parentheses, you have to take care of what's outside of it before you can go inside. So we have to take care of this minus 9, and we're solving to isolate the variable, just like we would if this weren't an absolute value equation. But we would add 9 to both sides of the equation, and negative 2 plus 9 is 7, and on the right-hand side of the equation, the minus 9 and the plus 9 cancel out, and I'm left with absolute value of s. Once I get to the absolute value of s equals some number, then I have to think about the concept of absolute value. For me to, for me to drop this absolute value sign, I have to look at what it's equal to and say, can it be positive 7? And I'm like, yes, because that's positive. If that were a negative 7, I would say, nope, can't do it. But here I can. So inside those absolute value signs, either S could equal positive 7 or S could equal negative 7. And that's probably the simplest kind of equation that you'll have to solve because you're done. Let's go solve for G. On this side, we have an equation solve for G. 3 equals the absolute value of G minus 3. And when you look at this equation, the absolute value is already isolated all by itself on one side of the equation. So there's nothing at this point to add or subtract or divide on either side of the equation because you've got just the absolute value quantity by itself. So you split it up. Either g minus 3 equals 3 or g minus 3 equals negative 3. Once you split it up like that, you solve it. On, the, on this one, you would add 3 to both sides and g 
equals 6. Or, on the other side, you would add 3 to both sides. G equals 0. So that's how you solve this type of equation. Let's do a few more examples. Not too many. Now, you'll see questions like this. How many solutions does this equation have? So you look at the equation, and this first one says negative 8 equals the absolute value of negative r. Now, it doesn't matter what this is. It could be the absolute value of whatever. But as soon as it's the absolute value, and you're saying that it's equal to a negative number, that means it has no solutions. So if you see any equation that is set up to where the absolute value, all by itself, now what's inside the absolute value signs could be more, like it could be some other examples that have no solution to be like the absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals negative 1. It's not this that will determine what, how many solutions you have. It is this that will determine how many solutions you have. And if that number is negative, you have no solutions. So if I just had the absolute value of x equals negative 9, no solutions. The absolute value of 3, negative 3, times x, absolute value of x plus 1 equals 9. I can't look at that specifically. In fact, let's make it equal negative 9. Now, you may think because I have this absolute value sign on the right-hand side and it's equal to a negative number, I cannot say what how many solutions I'll have until I only have the absolute value expression on one side isolated. So before I can answer how many solutions this equation has, I would have to divide both sides of the equation by negative 3. Because that negative 3 is outside of the absolute value signs, and I have to get rid of it. So now we'd have absolute value of x plus 1. Let's make that... Oh, no, we'll leave it negative. We'll leave it negative. Because now if I'm dividing negative 9 by negative 3, I get 3. And this will have two solutions. You have any kind of absolute value expression, and it equals a positive number, then you will have two solutions. Our next example, let me go back up to it. I have 0 equals the absolute value of d plus 1. Anytime I have an absolute value expression isolated, nothing else around it, it's just all by itself on one side of the equation, if it equals 0, then I have one solution. That's the only time that I will have one solution. Hmm, yeah, I'm pretty sure the only time. Yeah. Let's do another couple um, of problems here. Let me pause this for those of you that are in class and want to try these two. Let's try these on before we get started. Let's solve for you here. You should have already tried this, but let's check your work. You should add 1 to both sides of the equation because you're trying to isolate this absolute value of u. You add 1, you get negative 18 equals negative 3 times the absolute value of u. Then you need to divide both sides of the equation by negative 3. Now remember, you do the opposite of what you see to solve an equation. So with this minus 1 here, I would have to add 1 to get rid of that, to, to begin to isolate the variable. And then you, since this is negative 3 times, negative, uh, times the absolute value of u, you would divide by negative 3. Now I would have 6 equals absolute value of u. Once I have a particular value equals an absolute value, I drop that absolute value sign and 6 equals u or negative 6 equals u. All right, this next one is similar, but we don't have something like uh, negative 3 times the absolute value of u. We have something inside the absolute value sign. So we won't mess with that until we split this apart. We want to add 3 to both sides of the equation. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and that equals the absolute value of 5t. And I didn't think that bell was ever going to end. But at this point, we would split it up. And 1 equals 5t, 
or 1 equals negative 5t. We divide by 5 on this one to say that t equals 1 fifth. We would divide by negative 5 on this one to say that t equals negative 1 fifth. So most of the time what you can kind of, if you're good at keeping things separated, if you don't have adding or subtracting inside the absolute value sign, it's very, um, it's very possible that you will have answers that are the exact opposite of each other. And next, y'all help me out here. And what do we say? Thank you for being here with me today. Yes, that's all I have to I'm say here. about that.